Hello, uh, welcome to the course on uh, polymers uh, in which we are looking at concepts and applications as well as uh, looking at properties and uh, sustainability. Uh, in this week, we are uh, looking at uh, polymer processing and uh, latter part of uh, the lectures will also talk about uh, the recycling techniques and what are the processing techniques which are available when we talk of recycling of uh, macromolecular systems. Uh, this particular lecture, uh, we will uh, look at uh, polymerization kinetics. Uh, what we will see is uh, some polymer processing operations, there are reactions also. Uh, generally, we uh, know that uh, polymerization is done in a synthesis plant and uh, then polymer processing is done. But there are several other contexts in which polymerization is a general phenomenon which is observed. So, therefore, uh, we will quickly look at uh, where all uh, polymerization processes are involved and then try to see some mechanisms associated with these polymerization processes. So, our focus will be on uh, concepts related to polymerization. Uh, we will do a survey of uh, where all polymerization uh, are involved and then look at uh, kinetics of uh, uh, three different uh, processes, uh, free radical uh, polymerization, step growth polymerization and living polymerization. So, uh, let us first look at uh, where uh, uh, polymerizations are involved and that is of course, in the stage where polymer is getting manufactured or uh, a polymerization industry and uh, this uh, belongs to two different classes where we manufacture the overall polymer itself when we are making the thermoplastic and these uh, will be linear or branched polymers. And uh, in case of thermosets or rubbers, uh, the manufacturers which are creating, they will create actually a formulation. They will create what is called either a pre polymer or a resin or a, a latex. Uh, latex is a term uh, especially used uh, in case of uh, rubber like uh, materials. Uh, latex also implies that it is a two phase system, uh, there is a polymer rich phase and then there is a solvent. And so, uh, in, in case of rubbers, for example, this latex is uh, prepared and then uh, finally, uh, where the part is being produced, uh, shaping as well as reactions, cross-linking reactions specifically are carried out. So, in case of thermosets and rubbers, because cross-linking reactions will determine the shape, shaping and cross-linking has to be done together. So, th in uh, that case, we prepare only a pre-polymer or what is called a resin. Uh, we use resin as a term because viscosity is uh, 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 high but not very high. So, these materials can still flow and uh, are amenable to shaping. So, this is uh, uh, two broad class of uh, polymerization processes. In one case, uh, we do the polymerization and then do only processing. In the other case, we do some amount of polymerization to make the resin or pre polymer or latex and then finish the polymerization and cross linking processes during manufacture of the part or fabrication of the part. In uh, then of course, we have the polymer processing and uh, in polymer processing generally we only have extrusion molding operations. However, we could have uh, modifications being done at this stage. So, we could add a compatibilizer which is a reactive compatibilizer, we could add uh, uh, some amount of uh, branching uh, in a polymer and, and so some uh, reactive modifications can be done in this case which can uh, uh, lead to some amount of polymerization. Some cross linking may also happen. It could be desirable at times, but it could be undesirable also. So, depending on especially in the context of recycling of polymers, many of these reactions may take place. Uh, the other uh, of course, is the reactive processing itself. So, as I mentioned for thermoset and rubber, processing definitely involves polymerization cross linking reactions. But we also have process such as reaction injection molding. So, injection molding is a, a generally a shaping operation and uh, where we only are in involved with flow and some amount of uh, reactive modification. But reaction engineering uh, injection molding is where we start uh, with uh, monomers and uh, carry out uh, polymerization and uh, molding simultaneously. So, reaction injection molding therefore, combines both of these. And in case of composites, uh, since uh, we have this task of incorporating fibrous preforms into the polymer, quite often uh, we do it uh, with uh, thermoset materials. So, again uh, we use pre polymers or resins, 
and uh, sometimes we do it uh, in two different ways. We first premix the pre polymer uh, or resin with the reinforcement and then uh, prepare uh, a, a pre form or a pre preg or a compound, what is called a compound. And then we freeze it, we keep it under low temperature conditions so that uh, polymerization cross linking reactions do not complete. And then this pre preg, pre form or uh, compound is taken and then finally molding is done so that shaping as well as cross linking reactions can happen simultaneously. Similarly, there are uh, various composite processing uh, equipment where we actually will uh, start with the fiber and then dip the fiber in the uh, resin bath and then actually have the coating and then the fiber is wound on something or fiber uh, along with resin is passed through a die. So, if it is passed through a die then we call it pultrusion and uh, C sections and I beams and all of those are made very easily using this technique. Filament winding uh, is where we take the resin fiber together and we wind it as the name suggests. So, so there are different types of processes and all of these cases polymerization is essential part of the processing operation to get the final part. In, in terms of uh, the polymerization process there are two aspects which will be of interest to us. One is uh, what is the mechanism of uh, polymerization because this mechanism determines uh, how fast or slow the reaction will be, what will be the molar mass distribution and average molar mass that we get. So, so it pretty much determines what the uh, how the polymerization will proceed, uh, but there is also which way the polymerization happens and this is especially uh, valid for these large scale uh, manufacture of uh, polymer. It is also valid for uh, getting the pre polymer and resin. So, what is the mode or method or process? For example, we could do the process uh, what is known as solution polymerization or we could do an emulsion polymerization or maybe a gas phase polymerization. So, each of these will have certain advantages and disadvantages from the point of view of an polymerization operation. Uh, we should recall that uh, polymerization is essentially an uh, exothermic process and lot of heat is evolved. So, management of this heat in terms of uh, it not be getting to a stage where it is called a runaway reaction because when polymerization happens temperature increases, temperature increases polymerization rate increases, polymerization rate increases temperature increases further. So, that is called a runaway reaction. So, where uh, things can lead to degradation and combustion. So, therefore, uh, to avoid such things this mode or method or process is very important because it can determine the stability of overall processing uh, polymerization operation. So, let us uh, do uh, quickly look through uh, the mechanisms that are associated and the kinetics of polymerization. Uh, we will first begin with uh, free radical polymerization and as we have seen uh, the free radical is generated based on an initiator. So, the presence of an initiator is must for uh, this polymerization to proceed and once an active species is formed then it can uh, start attaching with the monomer and uh, uh, then uh, of course, the propagation can happen. And so, one is interested in knowing the rate of propagation because that is when uh, we are getting a polymer formed in the process. So, rate of uh, polymerization is pretty much equivalent to rate of propagation. Uh, however, to uh, analy analyze what could be the rate of propagation, we make an assumption regarding uh, the number of these active species which are there, they remain the same. So, so that the rate of initiation in which active species gets produced production is the same in which uh, we will basically have uh, two such active species giving you a terminated polymer. So, this is a reaction in which uh, active species are getting disappearing. So, active species disappearance. So, we assume that the rate at which this is happening is equivalent 
And so rate of initiation which depends on the concentration of the initiator species and uh, the rate of uh, termination which depends on how many such species are there. So, therefore, c square uh, and uh, basically the composition of uh, the m star polymer chain and uh, k t and k i are the rate constants which determine this reaction. So, if you equivalent equi equate these two reactions and then substitute in the rate of reaction for propagation. So, in this we do not this is the unknown. So, this can be substituted from here and you can come up with the final expression which involves the propagation rate constant, the initiation rate constant and the termination rate constant and uh, the concentration of two species with which we start the overall polymerization reaction. We basically start this reaction by taking some amount of initiator and some amount of monomer. So, this tells us what will be the rate of uh, polymerization given an initial mixture with certain concentration of initiator and certain concentration of monomer. And uh, based on this we can also calculate the average number uh, uh, degree of uh, polymerization and that again depends on uh, the concentration of monomer and initiator and the rate constants. So, you can see a direct application of this uh, in this exam question where uh, an AIBN initiated polymerization of styrene. Uh, which happens through this uh, mechanism. Uh, the question being asked is if uh, both monomer and initiator are doubled, then what happens to the rate of polymerization? So, you can uh, looking at uh, the information on the slide, you should be quickly able to solve this uh, problem. Now, let us look at the next uh, type of uh, polymerization where we have a polyester such as PET, and this is again an exam question uh, which uh, tries to probe us about you know what are the set of monomers which are used when such a process is carried out in industry. We know for example, polyester which means there must be a polyol or a diol or a basically a molecule with uh, alcohol groups uh, more than one. So, diol implies two uh, alcoholic group and uh, an acid carboxylic acid. So, which of these uh, uh, are those two uh, monomers which can lead to PET the polyethylene terephthalate polymer. So, think about it while we will discuss. So, uh, step growth is basically reactions of functional groups and uh, the rate of polymerization will depend on how much of these functional groups are there. And if we assume that let us say we are starting with the same amount of uh, hydroxyl groups and same amount of carboxylic groups, groups which imply equimolar uh, stoichiometry. So, for a polyester the rate of propagation will just depend on the concentration squared because it is basically concentration of OH and concentration of COH, but since both of those concentrations are equal we could just write the rate as square of each of these concentration. And based on this if we calculate the average number degree of polymerization it is actually a linear function of time. So, as the reaction proceeds the uh, uh, polymer starts growing slowly that is why we also call a step growth this is. It is of course, called also condensation polymerization because the reaction between hydroxyl and carboxylic acid groups uh, leaves out water, but it is also a step growth where polymerization happens step wise and the molecular weight build up the degree of polymerization increases gradually. And uh, the uh, other important uh, polymerization mechanism is uh, living polymerization uh, which is based on ionic. And uh, so, the active center is either a cation or a anion and it is called so because uh, the active center remains live. And uh, what that implies is let us say if uh, you have uh, uh, a monomer uh, which has become uh, uh, which is added uh, and then you have this active center. So, this gives you an activated monomer. So, this is the activated monomer. In this course, uh, we have been uh, basically trying to say this kind of a reaction uh, implying star for uh, activated uh, system and so this is the activated monomer. Now, uh, what happens in this case is the termination reaction is not uh, does not happen and so this activated species uh, will remain activated until the monomer in the system gets exhausted. So, if monomer is over no further reaction is possible. 
Now, uh, this problem is very analogous to basically uh, then saying that uh, the number of boxes depends on how many such activated species are there at time t is equal to 0. And those depend on this uh, cation or anion or whatever is the active center. So, the problem we are solving is the following that we have all these uh, boxes which depend on this activated species. So, that is the number of boxes which are determined based on ionic active center concentration. And then we have on the other side the monomer concentration. So, each of this uh, monomer which are uh, out there will have to start uh, going and filling these boxes. So, each of them uh, basically will have to fit into a box. So, the problem is the following that we have uh, C i number of boxes and we have C m number of monomers. How many different ways can this fitting be done? And uh, so, this is a combinatorial problem and uh, if you work on the distribution of it, it will turn out to be binomial distribution. But given that the number of boxes are small, I hope you can see why am I saying that number of boxes are small. Because our objective is to create a polymer chain which is very long. Just imagine if you have just one box, then basically we will all the monomers will get combined to form one giant chain. So, of course, that is uh, uh, not feasible. What we will have is a set of uh, initiators that we are adding, uh, which is an ionic initiator and uh, its concentration will determine the number of boxes and then all the monomers start coming and attaching themselves. So, therefore, uh, the uh, number of uh, uh, average number of uh, monomers that get attached to a box or attached to an initiator will depend on this distribution. And uh, at very high number of monomers or less number of uh, these boxes, you basically get the Poisson distribution. So, you can uh, go and see uh, how this Poisson distribution is usually narrow distribution compared to binomial or Gaussian or normal distribution. And therefore, living polymerization always leads to narrow molar mass distribution. And so, uh, the rate of polymerization in this case is again just dependent on rate of propagation because initiation is fast. As soon as you put the initiator, the boxes get created in which now the all the monomers have to go and fill themselves. And of course, uh, the detail mechanism is uh, slightly different, especially if it is a cationic polymerization and so no generic uh, kinetic model is available. But for anionic polymerization, uh, basically the rate of propagation will just depend on how many monomers are there. Because the active centers or the boxes are already created, so that is not the rate determining step at all. There is no termination also, so that uh, is irrelevant in this case. So, the only rate involved is the rate of propagation or rate at which monomers are getting filled in the boxes or monomer is uh, the rate at which monomer is reacting the active center which is present. And so, it is directly proportional to the amount of monomer present. And uh, average degree of polymerization is just uh, the ratio of the two concentrations. Because the problem is that we have uh, m number of balls, we have i number of boxes. On average, of course, m by i will be the no average number of box given the i is the total number of boxes. So, this is a straightforward uh, combinatorial problem in which uh, the average degree of polymerization can be found out just by reasoning like what I have given. However, the distribution is uh, Poisson distribution. So, with this uh, we uh, will close this lecture. Uh, uh, I hope you will be quickly able to see that uh, if you uh, double the initiator and monomer concentrations, uh, the uh, rate of polymerization changes and therefore, uh, also the uh, degree of uh, polymerization uh, will average degree of polymerization will also change. And uh, similarly, you would be able to identify by doing some search or from your uh, knowledge as to which are the monomers which are present for making PET. Thank you very much.